So I've been playing Glitch Hikers. Indie games! Possibly the most undescriptive genre name ever. Cause really, they could be anything. Shit gets even better when some of them don't even really try to be games anymore. Well, not in the traditional sense at least. They want to be an experience. Which is fine, but because of that, things can get tricky to review or describe. Very often, when I read or watch a review of one of these games, the reviewer more often than not just tries to explain the experience without really breaking down or even going into what gameplay might be there. For instance, back when I reviewed Sepulchre, all information I could find only mentioned the game's atmosphere. And while that's definitely one of its biggest selling points, there's still an actual game in there with puzzles and controls, believe it or not. But for some reason, reviewing indie games seems to be a way for reviewers and journalists to spew pretension and to show how smart they are. Because, you know, art is devoid of criticism and critiquing it will make you look like a dumb uncultured peasant. Anyway, if you thought that this rant was going anywhere, then you thought wrong. So let's review the fucking game already. Glitch Hikers is a game based off of that feeling you get when driving around late at night. Weird, spacey music is playing on the radio, and you're slowly driving yourself crazy as you stare off into the endless abyss. Now, I can't really relate to this since I don't drive, so I've never driven alone late at night either. So once someone releases taking the last train at 2am whilst listening to ambient music and avoiding the junkie in the back of the game, let me know. Anyway, as you drive along this dark and empty road, you'll come across some hitchhikers. These hitchhikers have stories to tell. Really, it's pretty much just a bunch of mindless semi-intellectual banter mixed with half-assed pretension of sleepy people late at night. Which is exactly what late night conversations end up being like. I mean, I had plenty of conversations like this about space and religion and I'm sure many of you had as well. That said, the game doesn't really build up to anything. Which is pretty much the point, but if you really want to have your mind blown by some incredibly smart and insightful shit, you probably won't find it here. Then again, I did like the dialogue. I think it's pretty cool to see a game try and recreate late night talks. And in my opinion, they did a pretty good job. Now, besides the dialogue, the game also heavily relies on atmosphere. And whether or not it's a faithful representation of driving around late at night, it's certainly something. First of all, the radio. Just like the dialogue, the voice on the radio is very vague. Like, lots of things said feel like they could have greater meaning, but they probably don't. Which, in my opinion, works for the kind of vibe the game is going for. Also, the DJ's voice is absolutely perfect for this sort of thing too. The guy has just the right amount of eh, and I'm watching you vibes to make me feel slightly uncomfortable whenever he comes on. Apart from that, the music on the radio also fits the game really well. I mean, it's a bit too soundscapey for my tastes, but in between everything else it all just blends together into this hazy, dreamy ride. The only thing that kind of bothered me was that there weren't a whole lot of sound effects besides the car's engine. Like, I know that most people won't really be bothered by shit like this, but something as simple as just adding some voice mumble could have made a difference. And while you could argue that adding voice mumble would disrupt the atmosphere, I just felt like the completely silent text boxes seemed a bit awkward. And I mean, games like Don't Starve, Killer7 and Banjo-Kazooie are some pretty great examples of how much adding some simple sound to text boxes can add to the overall atmosphere. Anyway, the graphics in this game are rather simple, with a lot of flat colors and fairly rough polygonal graphics. The simpleness definitely doesn't distract from what it's trying to do, and in some ways it only adds to the experience. Although, maybe I would have liked there to be a bit more detail. Like just some small things like adding some dust to the window or having some cigarette smoke floating around the place or something like that. I don't know, it's all a matter of taste I guess. But either way, what you saw in this video so far is what the entire game looks like. 
Which makes sense given the game's theme, but if this doesn't look interesting to you at all, I doubt the music and dialogue are going to change your mind. Now, in terms of gameplay, you just kinda drive around and answer questions. You can speed up and slow down with S and W, look left and right with Q and E, and change lanes with A and D. So you don't really get to drive around manually, which is good considering it would be pretty distracting if you actually could. Still, I do like there's at least some form of interaction with the car, cause I can imagine that just sitting there and taking it would get pretty boring. Anyway, the answering questions bit you do by answering questions. Each answer has a different outcome, but there's no right or wrong. Now, I guess the multiple answers thing adds some replay value, since each answer does alter the conversation, but it's nothing that's really worth more than two playthroughs. So, yeah, not a whole lot there in terms of actual gameplay. I mean, it is an experience. After all, the only complaints I really have is that there aren't any settings. Shit just kind of starts and you're supposed to deal with it. I mean, the game ran fine, but I personally always like to make sure everything is set to how I want it to be, even if it is just a precaution. And I get that this is likely done on purpose, cause, you know, experience. But the options menu is just something I always feel like I need to check at least once. Cause when it isn't there, I always end up feeling a bit distracted by monitoring the game's performance the first few minutes instead of getting immersed. Either way, I thought it was a pretty fun experience. One playthrough will last you about 20 minutes, and I can see myself playing it at least one more time at some point. And since you can pay for it what you want, that seems like more than what I could have asked for. Well, from something like this, anyway. So, yeah. Experience. <sighs> you know, while making this video, I found that it's very hard for me to review these kinds of games like short indie games or alphas and conceptual games, aren't really the kind of material I can make a proper review out of. I mean, I really had to try my best to make a video that's at least 5 minutes long and had some sort of critique going on, let alone actually trying to make shit funny. That said, I still really like games like this, and I also like talking about them, just not in a traditional review format. So, as of today, whenever I feel the need to make a video about some stupid little indie game I found somewhere in the butthole of the internet, I'll do it in this new series called Indie Game What I Like.